Welcome to Amazement Square Anywhere. I'm Miss Rachel. I'm Miss Ashley. And today we're here to talk about flowers, which is really exciting. I brought Melissa to be with me because she loves flowers. So what are we doing with flowers, Miss Ashley? So today we are going to do a dissection of flowers. So we brought a whole bunch of different kinds of flowers with us today to experiment with. Um, we are going to start with this beautiful orange flower. It's called Alstroemeria. You can find it at your local grocery store if you're interested in trying this at home. So what we're gonna do is use a bunch of tools to look inside of the flower and learn a little bit more about the parts and how they help the flower to grow and to make new flowers. That Are you ready? Sounds, yeah, that sounds really exciting, Miss Ashley. Okay, so we're gonna use a magnifying glass. We have some tweezers, a scalpel, and a toothpick. Are you ready? I'm ready. What do we do first? So we're going to take a look at this beautiful flower. We are first going to try to find the sepals. Ooh, what are sepals, Miss Ashley? So the sepal is a part of the flower that protects the bud before it will bloom. So if you've ever seen a rose that is all squished up, it's green on the outside. When the flower blooms, these sepals end up kind of below the petals. So we are gonna look for the one that has a dark green and a harder exterior. Do you see it on your flower? This one right here? Yes. All right. So there should actually be three sepals on this type of flower and we can just pull them off okay. to take a closer look. Being very careful because our flowers are fragile. Okay. All right. Now we can see the beautiful petals. So petals are normally brightly colored and sometimes even fragrant to attract pollinators. You are absolutely right, Miss Ashley. In fact, bees can see a little differently than us, so sometimes flowers have even modified their colors so that bees will come to them. Yes. So on this flower, we also have three petals. One, one of mine already fell off. Here's one. <laughs> Here's another petal. We're gonna take the petals off? Yes, let's go ahead and remove them so that we can get to the middle of the flower. Okay. And you'll notice I have a big green thing hanging off the side of my flower here. This is just a leaf. You're welcome to pull it off so we can investigate that later. And now we're left with, looks like a bunch of sticks. Yep, sure does. So right in the middle we have the male part of the flower and the female part of the flower. In this strand, it can actually pollinate itself. Some flowers will require pollen to move from one to another, which maybe could be helped by our bee. <laughs> so let me show you a little bit closer up. Here we have the male part of the flower. The whole thing is called a stamen. And at the very tippy top is where we'll find the pollen. There's also a big part in the middle. I can get it off. Ah, here's the female part. This is called a pistil. The very top up here is really sticky to collect the pollen. It will travel down the style and then it will find the ovary where we can have future seeds. So Miss Rachel, let's go ahead and try to take apart the male and female. So we're gonna try to find the sections that have a little clump of pollen at the top and we're gonna Pluck it off if you would like to use your tweezers. I'm gonna say you can do that. I'm pretty clumsy. I think I'm gonna use my tweezers. It feels very precise and scientific. Yes. <laughs> now something interesting about flowers, they're typically kind of symmetrical. So if we have five petals, there should be five sepals, and there should also be five stamen. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. I have four. Statement. Okay. I wonder if one of yours maybe fell off. Maybe. It can happen. It can happen. All right. So now we have the middle of the flower. And Miss Rachel, those two parts are actually male parts, but the pollen must have already moved off of it. So you can ah. go ahead and take those off. Too. Oh, that's why my count was a little lower. Yes. Ah. There we go. All right. Now this is the coolest part of the flower, I think. So this is actually three tubes and inside there's a little area where the pollen can travel down and then it can enter the ovary. So if you're feeling adventurous. I'm feeling adventurous, Miss Ashley. We can try to separate the three tubes and look inside 
of our pistol. Let's do it. Yeah. I think I'm going to need to use my right hand. Let's see. Very delicate. It is very delicate. Oh, mine just pulled off. It's okay. <laughs> we can still look inside, even if it breaks apart. Okay. Interesting. Uh, all of mine just came right off the top. All right, that's okay. All right. So what we're gonna do next is look inside of this round part down here. Okay. This is where we're gonna need something sharp. So you can either use a pair of scissors, maybe even your fingernail, but I'm gonna use our scalpel. All right. So we're gonna to try to just make one cut so that we can see inside of this big bulging ovary. All right. Any particular side is it easier to cut on? It think? does not matter. You can just make a little cut wherever you feel comfortable. All right. And then we can kind of pry it open to see what's inside. Ooh. What do you see? Oh, it looks like there's the beginning of seeds. It looks like little little shapes that look like the beginning of seeds. So I this think. is when our magnifying glass could come in handy. Yes. There are teeny tiny little round things that are called ovules. That's right, they're called ovules. Yes. <laughs> so once some pollen has traveled down the tube and reached these ovules, we will then have a process where seeds can grow and a new flower could form. That's so exciting. <laughs> Happens all inside of the flower. What if you could zoom in here? All right. Now, if you would like to, we could dissect another type of flower. Oh, I think we should. <laughs> Do you think maybe they will be the same inside? Maybe. Possibly. We find out. Let's investigate. Okay. Let's see. Should we choose a red rose or a pink rose? Mm. Roses tickle my nose, so whatever one you like. <laughs> okay. How about I'll do a red, you want to do a pink one? Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Very pretty. All right, so on this flower, we have the sepals. Yeah, they're much easier the to see on these ones. Yes, they are. And then our brightly colored petals. And I guess we will have to get on inside of these to see all of the other parts. That is a lot of petals to remove, yes. Ashley. So let's begin by taking off the sepals. Okay, I'm gonna start taking the leaves off mine too. These are nice and fit, very protective for our baby flower. Well, and as we are taking the uh, petals off, you could always keep them and dry them and put them in your tea or your bathtub. That's a great idea. <laughs> you could flatten them within a book. You could. You could also uh, put them into a soap or a candle that you're making. Mm, yes, they do smell nice. No. Ooh, okay. There's something interesting inside of the rose. All right, there's an awful lot of petals to remove. But you're right, I think wow. we're getting to something interesting. It looks just sort of like a rosebud in the middle, like it hasn't quite grown yet. And my flower had opened a little bit further than yours had, so Miss Rachel's is still a little bit protected in the middle. Ooh, oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. So some types of bugs, like ants, will actually help the flower to open up so that other bugs can come in and help pollinate. Here we are. All right, so. That looks a lot different than our other flower. We have a whole bunch of male parts, and it looks like the pollen is on top of all of these little stalks. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we pulled some of them apart, if we could find the female part of the flower in the middle. What do you think? Seems logical that it should be there in the middle. So let's find out. I don't know. I found a little tiny puddle in the middle. Huh, that's interesting. I don't know. 
you know, Miss Ashley, I'm really eager to see what people have growing in their gardens and that maybe they could do some dissections and show us some pictures. Yes, yeah, so we actually have a few flowers that we found out growing in the wild. This one's a tulip and we have some azalea flowers. You might find some flowers like this growing and you're welcome to pick them. Cut, yeah. a, cut them up and see what's inside of them. Yeah, and don't forget to send us your pictures and we'll see you next time at Amazement Square Anywhere.